Um, how's things going down there? You got to work a shift today. Yeah, I got to work a shift today. So it's, uh, I'm working a, a noon to 10. So that's a, that's a new thing for me. I, I haven't worked a second shift in, in quite a while, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting back and seeing the people I work with. Nice. Second How shift. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're good. Second shift is my jam, man. Sleep in a little bit, get home. <laughs> um, but we're doing good up here. It's getting hot. It's nice. Yeah, uh, it's, it's been hot here too. Yeah, yeah. I know you got to work today since it's the tap room, though. I'm going to crack a... Oh. Crack well, and I just have, I have my, my iced coffee. <laughs> so we wanted to uh, kind of talk Ooh. about all of our... Um, There's an echo now. You hearing an echo? Yeah, I'm going to turn my phone down. See if that's any better. I think that's a little better, yeah. Okay. Um, so we kind of wanted to do a little bit of a wrap on our mental health series and talk a little bit about that. And Yeah. Yeah. So what'd you think? Well, I, I, I feel like we... we we put out a lot of good content and I feel like we, uh, we brought some light to things. And I, I feel like these, these guests that we had were, were experts in this, that, and that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted experts in, in the field and yeah. experts in compassion fatigue. And, uh, I mean, Kim Speltz, I mean, amazing. Yeah. Um, just her sharing her story is, is so, I don't want to say groundbreaking, but it, it's so helpful to, to, to help people get through it. What'd you think? Yeah, I thought, uh, I thought they were all fantastic. I learned so much, my God. Yeah. Um, you know, thinking back to Joe's episode, which seems so far away now, um, <laughs> and the pro QRL, pro QOL scale, um, to hearing Beth's story on compassion fatigue and, you know, all the different things that she's done and what she's doing with AVMA and then all the way to Kim's call and discussion or depression, excuse me, and making the call. And, um, I learned how to recognize so many things in my, my own career, um, you know, that made me really evaluate some things. So yeah, it was yeah. something else. Well, yeah, and you've you've been you've been saying you've been having some struggles, and and yeah. I hope some of this stuff has has made it easier for you to to actually get through it and say, I need to look at myself and and figure out what I'm doing wrong and figure out how I can get some help. It absolutely um, has. Uh, you know, when we go back to the last tap room episode we did, um, you and I kind of discussed our pro Q O L scale. I can't. I have a hard time saying that pro Q O L scales. Uh, pro Q O L, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I actually got to thinking this past week, uh, one of the categories of secondary traumatic stress, and I was kind of reading it as stress from the client that gets projected on us that we carry, right? Like, right. You, know, well, um, you guys are just in it for the money, or you guys are, are in this field, you love animals, you should do this for free. I, I was kind of thinking along those lines, and I don't ever really experience that. But what I realized was I was where I was carrying secondary traumatic stress is conversations I've had with my coworkers about their own struggles and how much oh, they're yeah. struggling as well. And and I've been carrying those kinds of things around and, and I won't compromise them to, to say some of the stuff that I've heard, but there's a lot of people that are struggling as well. And um, I think it's, while it's very good to hear and have discussions and hear common struggles in our field or in our own workplace. I realized I was carrying that around a lot. Um, and I think I've told you before, like, frankly, I'm tired of seeing my coworkers cry. I mean, that's just, you know, it's, it's tough yeah. and carrying yeah. it around. And so I think, you know, I haven't redone the scale, uh, but I think my secondary traumatic stress is a bit higher than what I gave it credit for. Yeah. Um, and, you know, last week I, I kind of hit my breaking point. I don't even know why. I just was on my way to work and really didn't want to go. And I realized I was not okay. Talked to my supervisor that day about how to access our EAP, our employee assistance program, like Joe talked about, which inherently I knew was there, but I didn't really know what it was until Joe talked about it. Um, and, you know, I, I called them a couple days later because I was on shift and, and I just kind of started out on that process. I don't really have 
much to share as of yet, but I for sure will as, as time goes by, but just doing that already, I feel much better. And I, I mean, I got to tell you, like, I'm 41 years old and I have shingled right now. Like work stress is real. Yeah. I, I mean, I had, I hit that point Thursday of last week and Saturday night I developed shingles. Like there is no doubt in my mind that it was work stress, or at least that yeah. was a huge, huge part of it. And, um, you know, well, even if it's not the main, if it's not the main thing, it, it certainly didn't help. Right. Right. And so, you know, I, the, the, the big point I want to make too, is I take a lot of ownership in this myself and not, thinking about these things earlier and not making changes earlier. And, you know, as Kim said, um, you know, one of those people, we're those people that always pick up shifts and, and, you know, do extra things to help out. And it's definitely me and cumulatively over 25 years, I think it's just added up. Yeah. And, but now after hearing, you know, these three wonderful guests kind of tell their stories and, and, you know, I've downloaded, um, the Calm app and the Headspace app and and good good. I'm not a, one thing. I'm not a big reader. Um, <laughs> you and I are both not big readers. So so you know, but I, I'm trying to like integrate some of that stuff into my life, and um, so we'll see. I mean, I know this isn't like a quick fix. Like this is going to be better this week. That's not what I'm expecting, but um, oh, but you're you're getting on the right path, and that's right, the important thing, right? And I, I mean, 100. percent I credit our mental health awareness series and our three guests for this because they shared their story kind of put out some resources and yeah. you know like all three of their stories i could see myself in my career in and yeah so for me personally um you know i, I can't say enough how helpful it was <laughs> Well, and, and just think about it. If, if, if you are gaining benefits from this, think of all the people that are, have listened to our episodes and, and actually listening to these things and, and, and kind of looking in and looking inward and saying, yeah, this is something I'm dealing with too. And maybe I need to get some help or, or maybe I need to talk to somebody or maybe I need to find some ways to get around this. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and just Kim speaking about depression and, and all those things that I'm, I'm sure there's probably many people out there that, that, that listened and said, wow, that is totally me. And yeah. that is what I'm dealing with right now. Yeah. Um, I, I hope some people have that. Yeah. That kind of, I mean, not that they're going through that, of course, but hope that they have that kind of realization. And it's, it's hard to look inward and, and say, actually, it's, it's easy to say, you know what, I, I feel like I'm dealing with this, but it's a lot harder to look inside yourself and figure out why, um, think about trying to make some changes and uh, yeah you know the other thing is is you know and I, I know a lot of our listeners know like uh, Molly and I are moving back to the west coast in a few months and I think I also was kind of operating under the idea that once I moved back home and had a different job and a different life like a lot of things would be better and, and I realized also I, I I don't want to put all that pressure on future Jeff just to make sure, you know, thinking that life is just going to get great again in three or four well, months. You, you, you're doing that classic thing of, uh, I'm struggling right now. I, I really need to deal with this, but I'm just going to put all that on pause because right. at some point it's going to be different. And then you're going to get back to the West Coast. And it's not going to be any different. Right, exactly. And, yeah, so, you know, I'm also trying to look back and wonder if it was already there when I got out here, you know, was I already kind of starting to experience some of this stuff? So, you know, I, that was a conscious decision I had to make as well to not carry this with me when, when, when I move back. So, well, and, and moving, moving is like the, the most stressful thing a person can do. Right. Um, you know, I, I've moved many times and every single time I hate it, it's, it's never been easy. Um, you know, the, the, and you're moving across the country again. So yeah. that, that's, I mean, that's, it's got to be harder to, and, and you've already done it, right? So yeah. you, you've already done that once. Yeah. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to take something from the last time you did that and say, well, this is what I did last time and it didn't work and maybe yeah. able to make it, make it a little bit different. And you know, also you have the, the addition of, of Molly being there too. So that, that's going to be something different as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so anyway, yeah, it was a, uh, it's a bit of an eye opener. Um, and you know, one last time, I know we're not in May anymore, but I definitely want to implore anybody listening. I know we saw a lot of comments on Facebook. We got a few messages about, you know, people hearing these episodes and hearing them on repeat, basically listening to them a few times. I know I yeah. do. 
Um, <clears throat> actually, I mean, to be fair, I've listened to all of our episodes a few times. Because, <laughs> well, I edit it, so I, I hear everything. Yeah, so so many of the guests. At least a hundred times. <laughs> say, but, um, you know, it's, uh, I know there's a few people personally that, that we know really well that yeah. I, I was thinking the whole time that would, would benefit from this episode or from that episode or hearing this or hearing that. And it's good to see that that those people are listening and, and have heard it. So, um, yeah. And, and just, and people that I, I mean, again, I, I don't work as many shifts as I used to. Um, this is probably the first one in maybe a month or so that I've actually worked. So, but, but there's people that I've worked with that I'm like, as, as we're going through this, I'm like, Oh, this would be perfect for this person to hear this. Yeah. Um, and, and, and just getting that message out and, and, and putting a name, putting a name to it, putting a face to it. Um, yeah. putting a voice to it and, yeah. and making it be not something that, you know, we've talked about this where the, the stigma is, well, this is mental health issues and we don't really talk about mental health health issues, but we need to, cause yeah. that's, that's what we need to do. Yeah. Um, that's the only way to get around it is, is to get through it and, and not take it on by yourself. And you, you probably did this and I, I've done this in the past where you, you realize those things and you're like, well, I'm just going to deal with it on my own. And, and because I don't, because yeah. we don't reach out for help. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, we're the classic uh, intro introverts where we deal with everything internally and we don't, we don't get outside help. And, and, you know, that's something we need to stop doing. Yeah. Um, just not just you and me, but everyone needs to yeah. stop doing that and, and getting help and, and relying on people that you trust and relying on those employee assistance programs um, to help you get through some of these things. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think Kim made a great analogy, you know, she said something, if you're diabetic, you take your insulin, if you're high yeah. thyroid, you take your thyroid supplement. Right now, I have shingles, I'm taking an antiviral. If you're, if you have mental health challenges and you take an antidepressant, so what? Yeah. You know, if that's what, uh, you know, fixes those neurotransmitters or makes you work better, so to speak, for lack of a better phrase, um, so be it. Like you're just you're just treating another disease. And also, I, I also go back to thinking about you know if you are not in the right headspace, if you are worried about other things, what benefit are you to your patients? You're you're not completely invested in their care. You're not completely invested in doing what's right because you're you're so stressed about everything else that's going on. So getting in the right headspace yeah. it makes you makes you a better technician. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's. It's like I said, it's not an easy thing. It's hard to, to look inward and, and think about and certainly deal with and want to, to tackle. But um, well, th also think about why, why is that hard to deal with? Why, 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 why has something like this always been so hard to deal with? It's because it, you're seen as vulnerable. You're seen yeah. as, as weakened. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in back when we were growing up, like people that had mental health, mental health issues that those are crazy people, Th yeah. those were not normal people. Right. Um, and, and just, if you're dealing with these things, it's easy to say, well, I'm just going to hide that and I'm not going to deal with that because I don't yeah. want to be a crazy person. Right. Right. Um, because there was such a stigma, like, you know, back when we were growing up in the eighties, yeah. such a stigma over mental health issues that, right. that people that were dealing with that were, were were lost causes essentially. Like yeah, they, yeah. there was no help for them. Uh, crazy. You go to a crazy hospital and you you're there for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, where that's not the case anymore. That's that's not something that uh, that stigma should not be there anymore. And it, and it's hard to break through that because it's because it's so ingrained in in our in our headspace. And you know I, I think about you know we think about millennials and and all the things that that go on with millennials and with millennials they haven't been through that. They haven't been through that period of the 80s or the 90s where crazy people were were just that they were crazy and that was it um and, and thinking now you know people that are growing up now they're they're going, growing up in a time where that's not the normal like right. what's normal for for when we were growing up is not the normal for them yeah uh, and hopefully that's going to help things moving forward because as as we get older and we move out of the profession hopefully the the younger and the yeah the, the newer breed of, of technicians is going to be um, working in an environment where that stigma is not there. And, and yeah. hopefully we can help, help to, to get rid of that stigma and, and hopefully get things um, back to what's normal. Yeah. Agreed. I want to say uh, hello, uh, Rebecca Rose joined. Um, you know, it's, it's another one of those things that I think, you know, when I think back to 
where we started in practice in the mid nineties. Um, you know, I think it's going to be another one of those things that's going to need to be taught in vet school to students. Cause these are our future practice owners, right? That, that this yeah. is the thing that we deal with. And I think this is another one of those things that's going to have to start in academia and yeah. expose them to these challenges and, and, again, make it okay that this is what they're going to deal with, what their staff is going to deal with. And, uh, you know, I think that's another one of those things that that's really where, where some of the, I don't, I don't want to say acceptance, but at least in terms of like clinical practice in, in terms of in a hospital environment, you know, if you're working for a practice owner that, as we've said in some of these discussions, like don't believe in it or don't put any stock in it or what have you, you know, that's going to not, well, and even even Robin, after listening to our episode, she's like, "Yeah, I'm starting to realize that my the last job, the job that she left, I was dealing with a lot of secondary trauma that she didn't think that she was dealing with, and she was dealing with burnout." Yeah. Um. Or was she? She'll probably correct me on this. Um. She was dealing with burnout, not necessarily secondary trauma. I can't remember what she said. Um. But she was she was definitely dealing with burnout, which is why she left. Yeah. Um. Because. You know, there was no break in uh, the busyness and, 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 and the craziness of, of the job she was working at. I, I don't want to get too involved in it because I'm probably going to say things wrong and she's going to yell at me for it. Sure. Um, <laughs> but in, in terms of what you said, getting it in, into academia, um, one of the things that I've done, started to do with my classes is uh, Vetfolio. You got, you've heard of Vetfolio? Mm -hmm. um, we have gotten a, uh, a subscription uh, with our school and there's a few different lectures on compassion fatigue um, there's a lecture on burnout so towards the end of the end of uh, the last term's classes uh, where we were supposed to have labs and we couldn't do those labs because we couldn't be on campus and uh, what I did during those class times is I showed them videos on how to recognize compassion fatigue how to recognize burnout and what to do about it um, and I, I feel like you know I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain there were there were students that were in the class watching this going, how does this apply to me? I don't understand how this, how this, how, how this is important to me. Um, you know, and I, I kind of preempted that with, you may not understand this. You may not figure out why this is happening and how this applies to you as a, as a technician or a fu future technician. Um, but I, I said, you know, knowing that this is a thing and knowing that this is something that you may encounter in your career, uh, being able to go back and say, oh, maybe I'm dealing with that. You know, just even if I'm just putting a bug in your head to say, this is something that that is out there that you may have to deal with at some point. You know, when we were just coming up, we didn't realize that was a thing. We didn't realize that compassion fatigue was something or, or burnout was something. Um, you know, we, did, we didn't know. Um, but hopefully, you know, giving these students some exposure to it at this point in their career, um, you know, before their career even starts, uh, I hope that's going to help them in the future and help them to be able to, um, to deal with it if, if they do actually encounter it. Absolutely agree. Because I think, you know, I see a lot of posts online, you know, I, I think about my own hospital, but I, I, I see it with a number of other hospitals as well. Um, you know, te uh, technicians that are maybe just out of school, maybe just got licensed. They're working at these crazy busy practices they're getting burnt out in two, three, four years. And they're not, it's like maybe their first clinic job and they think maybe this is what veterinary medicine is. And if that's the case, I don't want to be part of it. And they're, yeah. they're not leaving that clinic to go find another job. They're leaving veterinary medicine. Yeah. Probably to some extent, maybe for their own benefit, because, that, well, yeah. That, yeah, you know, that like that might actually help their mental health, but we, we got to figure out a way to keep, these people around and make our clinic environments a lot better. And yeah. I think a lot of that is going to start with having those discussions, like you said, in vet tech school um, and, and in vet school as well. And because those are our future practice managers, practice leaders, yeah. lead yeah. technicians, head technicians, whatever you want to call them, practice owners, et cetera. Um, and got to figure out a way to foster that. Yeah. So, Anyway, so I, I definitely, you know, we want to take a, a minute and say thank you to, to Joe DiPulio and Beth Armstrong and Kim yeah. for, for coming on and kind of spilling their guts, if you will, um, you know, but like having these difficult discussions and sharing their very personal stories, um, 
because their story is our story and many others like us in the field. Yeah. And, um, you know, of course, all the resources are in the show notes of all the individual episodes, but think about beating the stigma, think about making the call, think about what fills your bucket. Um, you know, a lot of those little things um, and, and let us know, you know, if, if there's something else you're doing that wasn't mentioned. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let us know. You know, this uh, isn't the end of our mental health stuff. It, you know, it's, no. we, we've, we've said this is a big issue and um, you know, this isn't the end of us talking about this. There's, there's other, other topics that we already have lined up that, that kind of touch on this as well. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, definitely not a theme that's going away. Um, like you said, we no. have a episodes planned out that'll be, you know, sprinkled throughout down the road, but, um, yeah, big, big, big topic. And if you see it in yourself, make the call, um, you know, just start to look inward and, and, um, do something about it. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, a lot going on right now outside of mental health in our field. Well, I think it's still, I still, I think it still touches on mental health. Yeah. 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 It certainly could tie in. Absolutely. Um, you know, we, uh, I think we want to encourage in our clinic environments with our, our friends and colleagues, you know, have difficult, again, having difficult discussions, um, you know, I, I think to where I come from in Southern California, I come from a, a very white area. Um, I, I know one black veterinary technician. I do know a few other like people of color, but not, not very many in this field. Um, and I was thinking, I was talking to Molly the other day and we were trying to, not trying to, we were discussing different ways we've seen racism in veterinary medicine and um you know we kind of want to take some time each day and and educate ourselves yeah have discussions and somewhere down the road uh when the time is right we will certainly have at least an episode or two that kind of looks at this and and we'll talk to some people about it and, and try to um again bring light to it i don't know that right now is the right time no it's it's not right it i mean as much as we want to be invested and in, involved in it, it it's it's not our place right now i, I don't I, I don't feel like that's something that we the message coming from two white guys i think is probably not the yeah. best message to be putting out there right now but um you know and, and we we've said we 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 don't profess to understand what people are going through and i, I heard um I was listening, I forget what podcast I was listening to, um, but as white people, I, we have the luxury of being able to move fluidly in and out of these discussions. Yeah. Um, but for people of color, there's no moving out of it. Right. They're, they're invested in it all the time where we can see, uh, like you and I, we can see this injustice and say, yeah, I want to do something about that. I want to be involved in that. Um, but for people of color, this is their, this is their life. This is all the time. This is every single day that you're dealing with this. And you and I, that, that is something we, we cannot possibly be, even begin to understand because it, 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 it doesn't make sense to us. It's not in our world. Um, but we can, we can stand with them. We can, we can be supportive of them. Um, and, 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 and get their back and, and be with them um, to, to try and fight some of these things and, and, and fighting this widespread discrimination, widespread uh, racism. Um, you know, it's, I don't want to get political here, but, you know, just looking at the political landscape, I, I feel like the president we have now has, has made it okay for people to say some things that are, they probably previously wouldn't be able to say. Um, and, 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 you know, I'm not going to get, I don't want to get too political about it, but, um, I, I, f I feel like, uh, the landscape right now is, is so polarized. Yeah. We're so split as a nation that it, it's very difficult to have these fights and have these discussions because, you know, and, and social media is probably a big part of it where, you know, I, I, I've stopped, I've tried to stop arguing with people on Facebook, even when I feel like, 
I'm, I'm 100% in the right because people, people's opinions and their thoughts don't change. Yeah. Um, and, and that's on both sides. It's on both sides of the, of the issue. Yeah. Um, but social media is not the place to have those discussions. It's not the place to have those discussions because you don't do anything with that. Right. Uh, no, nothing's gained by it other than making people mad and um, getting people uh, incensed about things. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's, it's very difficult right now. And, yeah. and you know, I, um, I almost feel, I don't want to say I feel helpless because I, I am not someone that, that should possibly be saying the word helpless. Um, but I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble finding out what I can do to help. Yeah. And, and there's, there's been people that have, you know, said, Oh, we can do this and we could do that and we can be involved in this and involved in that. But you know, is it ever going to be enough? Right. Um, you know, it's as much as we want to be involved, I'm, I'm confused as to how I can be involved and how I can make an impact. Yeah. Agreed. And I, you know, I, I'm just going to take a few weeks and try to educate myself a little bit. Yeah. Um, try to identify, I think for one thing for me, again, being such a white profession, try to identify where that kind of exists in our field. Um, and you know, when we have these discussions and episodes, I don't, I don't want our guests to be educating me. I mean, I'm, I, I hope and expect to learn something, but I, I want to have educated and intelligent discussions about solutions. I don't, I don't want to have them on the show to just tell me what it's like. You know? Yeah. I, I want to actually say, how can we, what ideas do you have? How can we, you know, fix this in veterinary medicine in our, our field that we love. And, um, you know, maybe we can talk about some, some situations that have occurred and how to identify it, how to recognize it, how to have discussions with coworkers or clients that, you know, something they said crossed, crossed the line. Um, so, you know, again, when the time is right, a few weeks down the road, a um, couple months, maybe we'll, we'll look at, at having an episode or two and, um, but I, I, I'm going to challenge myself. You know, I put this out to you the other day, the, the eight minutes and 40 yeah. seconds. And I know that's not very much, but for me to sit still and try to learn something for eight minutes and 46 seconds, um, yeah. a day is, is actually a, a pretty big commitment. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to take that time and, and read an article, um, look and see what people are doing, read what people are doing. And, yeah. um, and, and, it, and think about and reflect what's yeah. going on. Yeah. So, um, you know, one thing we always try to do with the tap room is talk about something positive. Yep. Yep. That's one of the things we wanted to do with this, something positive going on. Um, I'll start. I mean, I kind of already talked about it a little bit, but the, the idea of the employee assistance programs, um, working at Tufts was my first experience with that. And I've kind of already touched on, you know, how it's helping me, but yeah. Our employee assistance program, and it's probably standard with whatever one you have or your clinic might have, but I mean, they give all kinds of counseling. It's not just mental health stuff. It's financial planning. It's work-life balance. It's all manners of anything that could be related to your job, whether it's, you know. And some of it's not even related to your job. It, it's right. yeah. it's exactly. all things. Exactly. Um, and, you know, as as this profession moves to a more corporate landscape, you know, with the blue pearls and the med vets and uh, the beacons and all of those that are out there. Um, I, I guess maybe that's one hope that I have is, is that kind of resource for their network and for their employees. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know how a small one or two doctor practice incorporates an EAP into their landscape. I, I, don't, I don't have any idea what that looks like or how expensive it is because it's all paid for by the employer. Right. Um, right. You know, how reasonable or feasible that is. I don't know, but I, I will say, you know, when we think about benefits of, or, or uh, concerns about joining corporate practice. Um, you know, I think that might be one that might actually, I'd have to put a check mark in the, um, in the pros column. Because, it's completely confidential. Um, mm -hmm. It's a phone call away. And like I said, I, I don't have much to share right now with my own experience about it because I'm just kind of getting started in that process, but I will certainly share and, um, you know, again, to help try to beat the stigma and talk about, you know, different conversations I'm having and what I'm learning. 
But I do think that um, is something that is really, really beneficial. And for people, again, that are in practices that have that, if you're experiencing any of this kind of stuff, or even if you just want help in other areas, don't be afraid to call. Your employer's not going to find out. Your supervisor's not going to find out. Well, they're, they're completely separate companies. They're not even... They yes, absolutely. It's not... It's not yeah. Uh, you know, for me, it's not Tufts. It's a completely separate firm. Um, you know, there's no report that's generated that's sent to your, your bosses or anything right. like that. Um, it's completely confidential. And, um, you know, well, the first question they asked me on the phone was, are you in danger to yourself or others, you know, at this point in time? I mean, they're, they, they're you know, very, very concerned and um, I definitely think it's a, a beneficial thing so yeah I definitely want to wanted to highlight that how about you uh, my my positive thing is just exposure uh, exposing exposing the mental health crisis and um, you know having these discussions you know getting through this it, it starts with discussions and I feel like these episodes have really helped out um, and, and just the response that we've seen online has been, has been great for people that are supportive and happy for um, having these discussions and being able to, to talk about it. And, you know, we've, we've had some good conversations with some of our listeners um, about the importance of this. And I, I feel like that's a, that's a big plus. Yeah. Um, and like you said, the, those employee assistance pro programs, you know, if you don't have one at your practice, um, talk to your practice and see if you can get one. Yeah. Um, because again, like we said, I, I don't know how much those things cost, yeah. um, but they're, they're highly beneficial. And, and I, I feel like if you have a, an employee that's, that's struggling, um, that that's going to be a, a it's going to be a game changer. I, th I think for an employer to have, uh, some place for their employees to go to. Yeah. Um, I also want to give like a, a second positive, um, it's activism, activism, activism from all races. I'm going to give a shout out to, um, a former coworker of mine, uh, Lara, who has been, uh, dedicating her Facebook, um, feed to essentially calling out people that are, um, posting some terrible, terrible things. Um, and, and just bringing light to these people that are, that are doing things that are so just reprehensible. Um, just some, even just some of the words that they say, some of the comments that they make. Um, and she's been very active in, in going out to protests and being supportive of people of color. And, you know, just Lara, if you're listening, thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, you are what's right in the world right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's my positives. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you, uh, you got to get to work before too long. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta start getting ready to get to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna have another episode coming out um, two a week a week from tomorrow. Week, yeah, a week from tomorrow. Yep. Um, so we have to record it first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eye out for that. Um, again, keep um, keep up with the engagement on social media. Keep yeah. Let us know what you want to hear about. Let us know who you want to talk to, um, different areas of the profession, because we certainly don't know it all. Um, and we but we're going to put out a poll. Yeah. We said that on, on, we haven't done that yet, but we need to figure out how to create a poll where we can actually have more than one response or just let yeah. them write in uh, with what they want to hear about, who they want to yep. um, And, you know, again, keep keep thinking about different areas of the profession that, that uh, we don't often think about. So, um, you know, send us a message, uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, et cetera. And um, just thank you everybody for your support. Yeah, thank you for this series. Um, I don't think we have anyone watching right now. <laughs> I think it's just you and me talking, but yeah, that's fine. That's all right. That's all right. Um, it, it's, it's early on a Saturday. Yeah, no biggie. For sure. But, uh, but it was a heavy series, but um, I can certainly say, you know, I learned a lot. I know you did too. It was yeah. conversations I needed to have and be involved with. So uh, again, thank you to our guests. Thank you everybody that listened and thank you for the support. All right, everybody. All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye guys.